Well, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zinka Show, episode number 342, with me, your host, Agostino Zinka. This is episode number 342. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Great. Amazing. How am I? Apart from perspirating profusely on my forehead due to the fact that I jumped into the shower and jumped out to the shower, jumped in and out of the shower way too quickly, and I applied copious amounts of cocoa butter to my face, I'm feeling pretty good. All things considered, of course, you know, the world has been contaminated by an invisible virus. As some people are calling it a China virus. Some people think it's a flu. People are losing their jobs. Their front and centre businesses are closing down. Pret a manger's in London or in the UK. Pret a bloody manger's are closing. But apart from that, you know, we're okay. We're doing pretty well. We're doing pretty fine. You know, cracked iPhone still here, still doing its bit. Um, I'm still wearing black t-shirts. I still haven't got my hair cut or my beard shaved. Because I don't think I deserve it. All right? I'm doing a bit of a self-flagellation to get me back on a straight and narrow. So I'm not flipping around and getting bent on weekends. All right? <laughs> so I'm giving myself a bit of self-flagellation and saying, no, Agostino, you will not look buff. You will not look cute. You will not have your little MCM thing going on with your haircut and your beard trim. You're going to remain rugged until you get back you know, where you need to be. That's what I'm doing to myself. And so far, so good, isn't it? I don't really, I don't know, I've, I've kind of settled into this COVID look. Um, I, I don't really know life before this, you know. I'm just going to end up staying like this, right? Just looking like an absolute um, sponge, right? That's what I look like. You know when you get a sponge and you sort of rub it against the wall? <laughs> That's what I look like. <laughs> oh, mate, it's absolutely peak. It's so peak. But anyway, thanks all for joining me on the Excellent Zinger Show. If it's your first time tuning in video on YouTube, make sure you smash that like button down below, right? Hit me a little comment, click subscribe if you're going to come back for next time. And if you listen via the podcast app, of course, if you listen via various podcast apps, you know, Overcast, your yeah, Apple, just Spotify's, make sure you leave me a review, a five star review if you can, right? Like, like your Uber drivers, right? Like that crappy Uber driver that's talking to you the whole way home, but starts you to leave him a good review do that and also try and share the show <clears throat> with your family and friends that'll go a long way to help me out of course but before we start the show just want to give my condolences man um thoughts and prayers go out to michael brooks from the michael brooks show formerly of the sam cedar show formerly of um the white uh, the young turks um for fame and just a general overall good egg right when it comes to political commentary especially from the left um sometimes you get it's weird in 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 um in, in social you'd get people that were sometimes to the left but a bit to the center right they, they weren't straight up liberals they kind of rein their stuff in a bit to be a little bit more palatable or to not sound so you know he, um head in the skies but i appreciate michael brooks because he was an unabashedly left person left leaning for the most part right um he was very much a bernie bro um he was very much a stringent a stringent sort of defender of all things socialism or especially the virtues of socialism and just generally just came across really well he didn't do it in a really snarky sort of you know um looking down upon you which you know most of these kind of you know um elite lefties end up doing but he did it in a really straight up matter of fact kind of way and plus he was super funny in it um it's just unfortunate that he passed away um his impressions of dave rubin were some of the best things you'd see out there but obviously i think he probably remembered for of course his book um that he read that he ripped sorry that he just published recently i think a couple of months months ago which you know we're probably thankful we got that and obviously, um, he's saw kind of a card uh, debate that will go down in the history books. But you just go down and just being a really solid dude who I thought probably didn't get as much as the flowers that she should have deserved when he was around. Um, unfortunate passing. Don't really know the cause of it. I'm hearing rumors that it was a possible heart attack or something along those kind of lines. If that's true, God Almighty, man. God Almighty. God Almighty, right? Do you know what I mean? Bloody hell, what a mad time we're in. And I'm, I don't know. Do you think that sort of stuff will be affected by what's going on in the world right now with COVID? Yeah, some some people are just more susceptible to maybe maybe one of the odd side effects is that it it kind of whatever lays dormant in you genetically it sort of like brings it to the forefront. I have no idea, but it's just not cool to hear somebody that was what he must have been in his late thirties, if that, in Michael Brooks, right? Suddenly, you know, succumb to some kind of you know illness or you know something to his nervous system that just you know essentially led him to dying, which is really really sad, man, for everybody involved. 
especially during these times when everyone's sort of banding around, being with their family and friends, um, seeing what really matters in their lives. And I know from watching a couple of shows, a couple of episodes of Michael Brooks' show recently, he did mention he had a couple health scares, but he didn't really kind of get into it because he was, a, he was a, an extremely private guy in that respect. But um, it's just such a if there ever there was a bad time to lose somebody this will be it i imagine during covid so thoughts and prayers go out to everybody connected with michael brooks um again if you're not uh familiar with him please check him out i think some of his best appearances or best work happened to be on his own show i kind of enjoyed him more on there i thought he kind of got a bit cynical and snarky when he was on with the young turks and 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 same could be said with sam cedar but I think once he started doing his own show regularly, he really came into his own, especially when he bounced off his co-host, his producer, who are probably devastated now. Bloody hell, man. Thoughts and prayers go out to them as well. And everyone that works in that show, man, it's just, ugh, just a really bad time, isn't it? It really is, man. Some of your, some of our cultural greats, people who had, a, who didn't have an opportunity to even cement their legacy, you know what I mean? Have been taken away from us far too soon, man. Do you know what I mean? He had a, he had a valuable role to play in shaping, um, the landscape of uh, politics in the US for you know decades to come as well so it's a real shame man it really really is so again for some prayers guys to his family and friends um, and again if you want to honor him I guess the best way would probably be to make sure you play as much of the Michael Brooks show or the Michael Brooks appearances on YouTube as you can he had a recent interview with one of the guys um, Stavros or is it Stav yes yeah, Stav from Come Town he recently interviewed him so check out that and a few other bits and pieces that he's got out there. And of course, his Dave Rubin impression is really, really good. Um, so yeah, definitely check him out, man. R.I.P. Michael Brooks, you will not be forgotten, my friend. Um, but we move on. What else do I want to talk about? So a lot of things going on in the world right now. May United lost. We got knocked out of the FA Cup against Chelsea at Wembley. It's to be expected though, really. And probably get into that a bit later. Um, there's stuff about, you know, real friends again in the LA scene. More confusion about that, which is funny. There's stuff about techno Twitter going crazy and it basically making Black Madonna and Joey Negro change their name, which is, you know, a win in their books. But what is the ultimate end goal? We've got stuff about fashion things here and there, some other funny bits and pieces, but you know, we're gonna get going. And again, if it's your first time listening to the show, make sure you smash that like button along the way when you feel that there's something that you enjoy that made you go ha 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 ha. And if you listen via the podcast app, of course, five star review and share that crap with your friends. First things first to get into because you know, want a bit of a laugh. Um, I've been thinking a lot, and again, this is something that probably shouldn't be wasting my time in thinking about right but i've been thinking a lot about what's happening with these non-mask wearing people right the ones that are like stringently against it the ones that have like a very um set position when it comes to wearing of the mask in public they're just like no it doesn't make any difference it's not doing anything this is group think i will not be a sheep my rights my rights blah 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 just thinking what is the end goal right what is the end going in in mind and what needs to happen in their lives for them to suddenly get on board now no one's wishing ill, Ill health on anyone you don't want someone to have to go through you know losing a, a loved one a family member having them be in a coma just so they can understand that wearing the face mask is maybe a good thing but i wonder what would have to happen apart from that that would make them go hey you know what maybe i was wrong because i think a lot of them especially at the ones that i've seen there's a lot of like you know what the quintessential Karen right there's sort of like stay at home mum who probably doesn't or maybe the retiree right maybe the a partner has made it or they've made a bit of a nest egg they made a bit of a you know they made some cash they've got something to sit on the kids have all flown the nest they've all got married and hooked up so there's nothing really you're not really expensing on anything so you just you know you just live your life on Facebook you, 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 you plant your flowers in your garden and you just keep it moving but then you might end up in some weird, you know, how Facebook is. You kind of start clicking, you add another refrain request, you go into some page, some group, and then suddenly you're in this place where you're thinking, okay, this is weird, right? And then suddenly your mind starts changing, your penis starts to get a bit skewed. It can go down a bit of a rabbit hole. But usually that's the archetype of the person, the person that kind of doesn't necessarily have anything invested in the outside world, like, they don't have any real skin in the game, right? They're not working somewhere where their business could get impacted by the rapid spread and acceleration. And, you know, if we don't get COVID under control globally, it could affect their work. So they're not bothered about it. And they just generally just have money. So they just don't give a shit, right? That could be part of it. 
Um, and this is a really good example of it. This is a video of this woman who supposedly is a life coach, right? It's one of those, um, I'm, I'm assuming, inspirational, what, mum influencers, right? The kind of mum's net sort of person. She gets on, uh, I'm assuming this was Facebook, and the blows this tiring. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but she essentially talks about the things that I've, she essentially gives her a reason as to why she's not wearing a mask in a particular establishment. So let's have a listen and hear what the rationale, what goes on for these people's head to make them think wearing a mask is not a good idea. Y'all, I am so done. I'm so reeling right now from going into Walmart and getting my groceries. And uh, okay, so here's the deal. She's angry. I rendered onto Caesar what is Caesar. All right. Mm -hmm. I am quote. being an obedient citizen and I am obeying my local ordinance and I am wearing this mask. Even though you guys know how I feel about it, you know where my stance is, being indoctrinated to do anyway, and I'm not going down that road. Thank I'm gonna you. get all this hate and I get it. Hate me all you want. I don't care. So here I am wearing my mask, right? Wearing my mask like this in the okay. produce aisle. Okay. Getting my kale, getting my spinach, getting my apples, getting okay. my carrots, okay. getting my broccoli. Okay. Like this. Okay? Yeah. Like this. Okay. Pull you down to freaking breathe because these things, it's like Okay. There's your first problem. And I, I, I like how this is essentially like a visual representation of what happens when you see those videos online where it seems as if somebody's been wronged, right? It seems like, oh, this police officer's punched this girl in the face or this kid, this guy has pushed the kid into the street. It always starts off to it always starts off at, at, at a point to make the aggressor look like you know like a sensible person no it makes the aggressor look completely like a psychopath right right and this is the kind of visual representation of it this lady started off the story saying you know she kind of gave us the impression that she had her mask on and suddenly in the produce dial some some sort of uh what do you call it some um gestapo agent of the mass society rolled up to her and told her to pull her top bit up over her nose or was really picky about the way it looped around her ear no no one did that she didn't have her mask on properly in the food produce aisle right which happens to be the place where everything is sort of like out of its packet or it's raw it's in little boxes and stuff you just maybe grab it with your hands or with a little plastic bag so you know it's prime it's a prime place for someone to sort of like go and spread you know a, a a respiratory disease or a virus would probably spread a lot easier, I reckon, right? On the surface of fruit and vegetables and stuff. So it, it would go without saying that, a sh you know, shop assistant might come up to you and say, eh, Madam, 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 do you mind, see that mask you, you had on before you walked in? Do you mind putting it on whilst you're inside, please? Yeah, yeah, please, thanks. What's wrong with that? What is wrong with that? That's the issue. And again, the first bit, right? The, the start of the video, she's like, oh, I've got all these views about you know wearing a mask i think it's indoctrination she doesn't want to be a sheep she does you know if you give this right away the government's going to take away every other right you got cool whatever we don't care file that into your into your drawer full of opinions lock it with a key get that key for out of window we don't give crap right we're at a stage now in the world where you just want to get this thing over so everyone can get back to doing what they want to do, right? Whether it's sunbathing in some decrepit beach somewhere, buying way too much eyeliner, or, you know, just hanging out with your daughters way too long after midnight. Whatever you like to do, just we, we, everyone wants to get back to doing that. We don't care about your personal opinion anymore. So just file it and just wear it. But she didn't even wear it. And now she's going to turn into this, because imagine this video is what, I've only played you a minute and a bit, right? A minute so far, bang on. It's already, it's going to, it's another six and a half minutes of this lady, what? Trying to explain why her um, reaction or upsetness or the reason why she left her shopping behind was justified because someone told her to put on a mask that she was already wearing, but she took it off because she couldn't breathe. Yeah, that's funny, isn't it? You, she gave us, she's sort of like, you know, signaling that she's healthy. She's buying kale and carrots and apples and stuff, right? Um, but then she has no ability to breathe for what? With some sort of constraint over her mouth for the for the period of five to ten minutes. Come on, woman. Builds more bacteria. Pulling it down so I can breathe, right? Woman comes around the corner with the mask on, yelling at me that I'm not wearing my mask. Yelling, yelling at me. Really? Yelling? That I'm not wearing my mask i pulled it down to breathe meanwhile 
I just said, I gotcha. I was nice. I handled it in a loving way. I was like, gotcha. Meanwhile, look in her cart. No kidding. Uh, the, that big old plastic bucket of cheese puffs, Jimmy Dean sausage, Lunchables for all the kids, frozen meals, instant mashed potatoes. What else was in there? Oh, all the hostess, all the ding dongs. She saw a lot of stuff. All, isn't the, it? all the, I don't even know the no, names. No, I just like saying ding dongs. All the ding dongs. Oh, ho hos, ho hos. That's fun to say too. Those were in there too. She had all the instant meals. She had those things of instant macaroni and cheese that all you had to do is pour hot water in. Okay. And we'll leave it there because you know we know if she's getting that. But it's just you know again you're the one at fault here. You're at fault. But then somehow, because, of, uh, and again, I'm not, I'm not really a fan of going up to strangers and telling them to put a mask on. I'm not a fan of going up to strangers and telling them anything apart from if you're going trying to, trying to holler at somebody you want to hook up with. Do you know what I mean? You shouldn't be walking up to strangers and talking to them. It's just weird, isn't it? Just leave people alone. Um, if you want to hook up with somebody and you want to attempt to get to know them, you have the, you, it's, you have the right to say whatever you want, and they also have the right to say whatever they want back to you, right? So you're playing with fire. But just don't walk up to strangers and be like, hey, put on a mask or can you tell your kid to calm down? Like some people are just, they're just too brave socially. There's no, and again, this lady definitely looks like she didn't get punched in the face ever in her life, right? So this idea that it's a it's a fair exchange is just weird. This idea that you should stand there and then because you're in the wrong and someone called you up on it, you get embarrassed and then you then start to judge or, you know, give them mean eyes because they decided to get a pack of flipping penguins for their kids for lunch or whatever. I, I don't know please forgive me that lady might be in financial difficulties she might be in a position where she can't necessarily give her kids the healthy food she doesn't might not have the education well, there could be a plethora of reasons behind it but this is not the time that's and that's the issue i have with all this stuff we're so as a world this is just america but i think globally we're so divided with this issue when it should be a time where we should be collectively coming around we should collect we should we should be collectively joining up right underneath a banner of humanity underneath a banner underneath some sort of banner of like the downtrodden or the have-nots or something trying to fight against the haves we shouldn't be bickering amongst ourselves about you know somebody embarrassing you a little bit or you feeling a little bit childish because you haven't got your mask on in the fresh produce aisle imagine where everything's open anyway if ever there's a place where you can't get your breath it'll be there come on just be reasonable and that's the thing I, and i just i just wonder where when are we going to get back to being just a reasonable world again where people can just have disagreements and just you know whatever keep it moving just be adults about it and not turn everything into some sort of faux what motivational post to fight your side and to get people on your side to get the it's just bizarre and these are adults too there's a thing as well as adults just imagine what her daughters and children are doing or daughters or sons are doing or nieces and nephews must be thinking watching that video it's so embarrassing grow up man grow the hell up but hey what do i know and then another one i thought was interesting or just in terms of like um I'm not sure why this got me thinking. It's maybe because I'm just getting older and you just get a little bit more compassionate. But I'm just thinking about girls in general. <laughs> yeah, especially younger girls. Maybe because I've been reading these really terrible accounts of what's happening at Burger Records. But it's also, it's, it's kind of been making me, f yeah, I've been reading the accounts of what's happening at Burger Records. I've been, uh, I've obviously recently just finished watching that um, Jeffrey Epstein documentary on Netflix and just seeing how, you know, young women who are just trying to find their way in life can get so easily manipulated by people who know what they're doing right as soon as somebody has any level of understanding of how to manipulate somebody for good or for bad especially at a stage in their life where they're still trying to figure out who they are it's just always it's just such a heartbreaking thing especially for me when it comes to women because you know they don't have the ability to fight their way out of a situation um and i don't know it just feels as if they're a little bit more um not precious but they're a little bit more vulnerable to manipulation when especially when it comes to words or whatever it may be right and then it got me thinking about some of these street fights this is a super ghetto girl street fight and just thinking about you know the amount of like embarrassment that must come from having a fight having you fight on the internet if you're a girl a young girl at that under the age of 18 or something let's say because i think if you're above 21 you just explain it away as a drunken night out somewhere you can you know paint a picture of that girl as a b-i-t-c-h but usually under the age of eight you know 21 or under 
the reasons why you're fighting are probably quite valid, right? And everyone in the area knows about it, right? In your high school, in your whatever, in your college, local area, in your church group, in your teams that you play in, everyone sort of knows what's going on. It's not like a thing where like, oh, you can just lie and say that girl did this or like, you know, they know why you guys are beefing. And for it to end this way, it's just oh, heartbreaking. So it's a video of these two black girls in the hood somewhere. I'm not sure where they are. It might, might be Boston, might be somewhere else. It looks like Boston, it looks like The Wire. But they're fighting and you see one girl in frame who comes out, jean shorts, no, no shoes, brought up on and a really immaculately done head full of tiny 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 braids like the kind of braids that um a lot of like nigerian women like tend to like in the uk they're super thin really small little dots i imagine they're really hard to do and imagine yeah imagine it takes a long time to do them especially when you've got different sort of colors and patterns and stuff and it's super long right they look beautiful when they're done when they're done brand new they look absolutely gorgeous and just look how this fight pans out two black girls fighting in the hood yeah, friend. Yeah, friend. Yeah, friend. Another girl got hair, and then she just grabs the top of her, the top of her braids, and just swings her around. Oh my god! And you know, again, don't need to go. You know, have her again. Absolutely wipe the whole fight. But I'll leave the link if you want to watch it yourself. But just thinking to myself, God to be that age and to be getting molly whopped on in front of everybody on the internet um especially nowadays right um it's weird in america how you bust one right and look how different the houses look compared to where they were just one street um but yeah um i don't know man what that must do to kids mental health i really don't like getting washed on because i got washed in school once right everyone gets you get into a fight you lose right and you don't there's no cameras around it's just what it is what it is, isn't it you lost you got the better of me but Imagine getting washed like this, where somebody's grabbing the top of your head and swinging you around at will, and then placing you on the floor and punching you in the face where they want, slapping you and they want, call, calling you names, repeating stuff to you, telling you to call them daddy or whatever, or mommy. Like, God almighty. Even, and it's even worse sometimes when you're the one that's just, you, you, you're, you've got the justified reason to instigate the fight. Yeah, you should be the instigator. People think you're justified in your anger and you still get washed. That's when it's like, God damn it, it's firing things off for me, innit? That's when you just got to hang up and be like, you know what, I'm done. But I don't know, man. I just I just feel so sorry for these girls. I say, it pains me. Imagine being a father and having to watch this and that being your daughter. You'd be like, God damn it, girl. The first thing you want to do is just give her a knife and say, look, where does she live? I'm not going to drop you over there, but you know, I'm on my way out anyway, right? Let's just jump in the car. And if we happen to drive past our house and uh, you point it out to me, I'll just park up and spark a zoo. I don't know. Oh, I don't know, man. Just, it breaks my heart seeing these videos, especially during lockdown. I just want us to get all get along. That's what I want. I want us to all get along. Um, talking about getting along, right? Talking about being friends. We've got this absolutely wild, wild, wild statement from the good old Donny, right? He never misses. Good old Donnie, he never ever misses. So Donald Trump got on the podium the other day, or just, just today actually, and he was asked a really, I think a pretty wild question in this respect. I think some of these, again, I'm, I understand being not, not being a fan of the dude, right? He doesn't have a lot of redeemable qualities, but I think some of the questions that they feel to him during these press briefings are wild. I don't like, just makes, like the way they sort of like try to set him up and goad him into answering in a really shitty way. It's like, he's already a, a terrible person you don't need to give him much rope to hang himself and he's always kind of tots up in a weird way and i thought this question in my opinion was a bit bizarre but a journalist asked him about J Ghislaine maxwell right or Ghislaine, or as as, the, as she's referred to in the um sort of that like independent journalism world she's referred to as Ghislaine maxwell because supposedly according to ryan dawson she's well known for her um ability to pleasure a man via certain techniques let's just call it that so people are calling her now Ghislaine Maxwell but regardless right this lady is essentially being accused of being the right hand woman of you know Jeffrey Epstein this person that's had documentaries features about him connected to some of the biggest most powerful people in the world blah 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 um, accused of heinous crimes against underage girls just you know the worst thing that you could get accused of these days right an app an actual um, uncancelable um, charge right there's no way you're getting out of that and then coming out and being like hey guys remember me and sort of returning your career it's done for you so rap everyone could sort of agree this is evil this is fucking you know obscene this is disgusting 
So he gets asked a question about um, Madame Ghislaine Maxwell and listen to Donald Trump's reply. This just, again, it's just baffling the people that he sort of like gives sympathy to and the people he doesn't. Like, it's just really, really, really weird. Uh, let me try to get up here for you guys to see. Put up here for screen. Um, Ghislaine Maxwell is in prison and so a lot of people want to know if she's going to turn in powerful people. I know you've talked in the past about Prince Andrew and uh, you've so again weird question to ask right your president's not there to speculate about you know current going um current you know um goings on in culture obviously this is a myth this is kind of an exception but the way he's propped it is a bit like what what do you want me to do sit here with you like we're on a podcast and debate about who she could probably name when i'm featured prominently in a few of the pictures i think not criticize bill clinton's behavior i'm wondering uh, do you feel that she's going to turn in powerful men how do you see that working out i don't know i haven't really been following her too much i just wish her well frankly uh, i've met her numerous times over the years especially since i lived in palm beach and i guess they lived in palm beach uh, but i wish her well hey Do um hey donald mr trump mr president sir is Ghislaine Maxwell, Ghislaine Maxwell, Ghislaine Maxwell. This isn't bloody um, a Karen that was pulled up for maybe saying something a bit racy in the supermarket. This woman's been accused of essentially assisting in the running of an um, exploitation ring of bringing underage girls from all over the world for the sexual benefit of high-flying um, billionaires and, you know, warlords. <laughs> And there's, she might have ties to Israeli Secret Service and all this really weird, dark stuff. And you're wishing her well. 2020 is just a wild year, isn't it? You just don't know what to make of it, mate. Wish you well. As if, I don't know, she's on a plane on her way to go to, you know, to her first semester of Erasmus. Go on, Ghislaine. Off you go, babes. She's not going to Erasmus. She's not on her way to uni. It's not her first job, right? She's in prison, denied bail, right? I think, was it half a million or a million dollar bail? Because she was essentially Jeffrey Epstein's madame, who happened to also pass, you know, in more than shady consequences. You're wishing her well. This guy is a wild dude, man. And this is why sometimes I think to myself, why are people so surprised? By everything that he does or why people get irritated by everything he does when he does this consistently when he when he's so inconsistent in the way that he kind of replies to things i'd say yeah maybe that's the way to say it like he's shown you he has no real moral compass really you know if that's safe to say i don't think you get offended by it someone said that to him right he doesn't really have any he, like he sort of like goes with the wind you do you'd imagine it kind of feels like he has some certain things that he's kind of dead set on right calling it a china virus giving people nicknames um being against immigration sort of right but he hasn't really got anything that he's sort of super steadfast or maybe china he's you know he's got a pretty bad opinion of china that's about it it feels like i um, mean he doesn't like ms13 of course right <laughs> um but god damn it man why do you guys get so annoyed by him especially some of the people i follow on twitter it's like every day especially some of the people that kind of reply underneath his tweets like trying to get at him and trying to trigger him it's like he's a president he he's kind of lives in a world where trolls are the only things that sort of occupy his mind's eye why would you think this would get to him really why let's just end the clip here whatever it is uh i don't know the situation with prince andrew just don't know not aware of it that's a wild statement man i don't know her but we used to live next. See, he gets a little gratification because he's he's living Palm Beach next to us, so he gets a bit happy. Like that's like that's like a, a feather in his cap. I used to live next to Ghislaine Maxwell. Mm, probably not a great thing to sort of brag about, right? I live next to Epstein and Maxwell. I was like, I don't know about that dude, man. He's just a funny guy. He just always, I don't know. He just makes me laugh. Just ob just observe observing from far. Of course, if you live in the states, it's not a good time to be, you know, an American. But God Almighty, this dude is entertaining as f entertaining as f anyway let's move on in to some other topics i thought i would get on so yeah let's get into this one first let's get into this where is it 
Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? So, <clears throat> there's this really interesting video that popped up on the Tiger Belly subreddit. Definitely check that out, right? Tiger Belly. Um, great podcast um, with Bobby Lee and Michaela. And uh, what was his name? George, the producer. Definitely check that out. He's obviously got another podcast as well called Bad Friends of Andrew Santino. And, you know, just generally a good egg in the sort of like LA-based podcast and comedy circle. The video popped up on the subreddit of Eric Griffin, another guy in that crew, um, who was essentially complaining about this recent you know i don't know it seems like maybe because of lockdown and because of the you know changing world economy and stuff and you know the nature of live events all the arts and entertainment has been flipped on his head people are maybe reassessing where they sit right in terms of the yeah where you sit in the overall schism of stuff right where where do you sit yeah where's your position on the totem pole even totem pole's not the right word to say it's sort of yeah maybe it's totem pole because it's not necessarily you're not really aim you're not really getting up to go anywhere because there's only one there's only a couple spots at the top right for the kevin hart and dave Chappelle's. it seems like in every industry there's like a couple of top spots that are available but it seems like within the arts everyone's sort of figuring out where they sit where they stand where their career is in general because they're looking and they're thinking okay especially the ones that don't have that didn't have anything going on the side um that they could do via laptop such as a podcast or such as a twitch channel whatever it may be or a popping instagram profile they're starting to trying to they're starting to see where they sit because there's people that were doing that stuff regularly on the side and they're also hustling making you know they're also producing shows on you know tv and all that stuff and doing stand-up in as their day as their kind of bread and butter but they were doing you know internet stuff on the side so they're now realizing that, oh, I might be a little bit ahead of this person because they're just relying on shows to get forward. But there's also that kind of, it seems like just there's a realization now because everyone's at home that maybe you are not where you think you are in your actual community or peer group of friends that you kind of hang out with. And again, it's a rough realization to go through because I, I feel for Eric Griffin because I've, I've been through a couple of them. Um, in various scenes, I'd say uh, maybe maybe say the kind of East London promoter scene place, right? The cool kind of hipster guy scene, and I'd probably say the other one was the other one was the streetwear sort of fashion streetwear. Yeah, the early streetwear sort of days was a good example of that too. Two areas where I was possibly at the forefront. I was one of the the first couple of people involved in it, right? But I also didn't make the transition. Or I didn't maybe make the right connections, the right little network steps. And I wasn't just liked in those certain areas that allowed me to progress forward. So then you have to decide what you're going to do. Are you going to keep chasing those people that are kind of getting a bit f further ahead than you? Or are you going to just try and carve your own way? This is only if you're interested to stay in the scene, of course. If you don't interested, hang your coat up and carry on moving. But if you want to get forward and those guys are kind of pushed away from you, whether it's be because of circumstances, right? Some people just get, imagine, you're both interning somewhere, you get a job, no, you both intern somewhere and suddenly that person outperforms you and they suddenly get offered a permanent role within the first six months but you're still interning. It's natural there'll be a bit of a separation, right? They might feel as if like they want to talk to the, you know, the actual contractor staff and not the freelancers. It, it kind of happens sometimes like that. Um, or just somebody's just lucky and they kind of sneak in through the back door and they come in first job assisting instead of, you know, maybe helping out, you know, making contact sheets. They actually be a, end up being a photographer assistant. So it can just be different pathways in. But I think with the internet, personally, in my opinion, I think that is a, it's, it's a bitter pill to swallow. It's hard, but I think it's, it's, a, it's, ma it's made easier because of the internet. Because before, if that happened to you and you got chucked out of your peer group, it essentially felt like you've been ostracized by your own village, right? It felt as if, why is the point of life continuing if you are not able to sort of be in the same company as your peer group? But with the internet and with social media, you're able to sort of like carve your own little, you know, your own little scene, your own little micro scene within the scene um, that you can sort of band your friends around and uh, that can sort of like elevate your platform, magnify your voice. Um, it's all those kind of good things. And I thought this video was sort of heartbreaking because essentially Eric Griffin has sort of like never come to a realisation. Maybe it's part of his personality. He's just always been that kind of guy who always feels as if um, his friends don't necessarily always include him in stuff. But I think you just have to accept sometimes that you just sit in a different category.
category than what you think you do amongst your friends who you probably think you're in the same group as. It's very hard to swallow, but I think it's very important in terms of understanding what's going on, especially in the arts, culture in general, how to move forward, how to navigate this weird uh, moment in time when at the moment. I'm going to load up for you now to view. It's just loading, and there we go. It's about six minutes. won't watch the whole thing, but I'll just give you, I think the first couple of minutes give you a good indication of where his mind's at. I mean, it is what it is. You know, everybody's doing what they're doing now. I get it. I'd stream too. You know what I mean? Like, I get Like, Rami's doing it right. He, he, he quickly started a YouTube page and put all those videos on YouTube because you guys watch them. You know, if Bobby's on a video, people watch him. I get it because I do the same thing. You know, so it is what it is. You know, so they do a Nate thing, and you know, I, 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 I've been excluded. They, they don't, they don't want me in there. If they did, I'd be there. So that's 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 the end of it. And I guess. Obviously, at the moment, if you're not watching via the screen, he's playing, I think, was a, it was a Call of Duty Warzone. Um, from what I've read, it's it's mostly a gaming thing, but I do think a lot of it stems from the fact that he was never given the opportunity to do the Bad Friend show with Bobby Lee. It was essentially like, you know, it seemed like that would make more sense, right? Eric Griffin and Bobby Lee had this weird, fractious relationship where Eric Griffin feels that Bobby Lee's his best friend, Bobby Lee's not very, you know... He doesn't, I don't know, he's not the most um, emotionally receptive person when it comes to people maybe reaching out to him and stuff and he maybe pushes him away naturally. Um, it then comes to a point where, you know, he wants to make it, do another show outside of what he does with Tiger Belly. Bad Friends is like a really great concept. This idea that, you know, they're two uh, friends that ha love each other, hate each other at the same time, continue to sort of take the piss out of each other. And in terms of a dynamic, it, it would work pretty well with Eric Griffin and Bobby Lee because there would be some real tender moments in there and some real general frustrations about how Bobby Lee is to be a friend to, how it is being a friend of Bobby Lee's. But I guess because of ratings, I guess because Andrew Santino's profile is higher, maybe because Andrew Santino is a more proficient person in terms of putting a show together, he might have more credits, whatever it may be, right? Something that doesn't mean, it doesn't necessarily mean Bobby thinks Andrew Santino's a better friend than him. It just means in that kind of um, platform, in that, on that, yeah, in that instant, when it comes to producing a podcast show, this guy is just better for what I need. And it's just, a, again, it's a hard pill to swallow. It really is because you think you're all at the same level. But sometimes you're not. Sometimes you can't see the level that they're on because you all happen to be friends. And I think that's the issue sometimes because that's an underestimated issue people don't talk about a lot with having successful friends. It's all well and good having friends that are successful and are doing great things in the area that you want to be involved in, right? Whether it be fashion, music, DJing, you know, bloody whatever, right? law firm it doesn't matter it's all well and good having them but sometimes it can skew your idea of where you are in your career or it can give you a maybe it can give you a sort of overinflated sense of self and it's happened to me plenty of times where you sort of think because you are standing next to her and him or because you happen to be friendly with this guy that it somehow puts you within their same sphere and you're not because they're operators you are merely somebody trying to find their feet right they've got a lot of skin in the game they've got experience they've got cloud they've got this they've got whatever they have they just have that extra bit that you're not seeing because you're just seeing it as a sort of like a binary we are the same age we went to the same school we had the same it's some success and sometimes these sort especially in entertainment there's so many other things apart from just the binary man girl black white 22 22 thing it's a lot more it's a lot more nuanced than that your life is generally like that and i guess eric griffin just hasn't discovered it and again the other point of this which goes back to my crystalia point is that you live in la the la comedy scene by all tense purposes from what we've seen with the crystalia situation it isn't the place where you naturally go and say okay i've made some real friends here i think they've got a lot of people that they know that they're close with but i don't think you'd ever say any of those guys are real friends because the moment a controversy comes along the moment you get involved in some sort of scandal which you will especially if you're a comedian 
you're saying a lot of words you're in a lot of podcasts you're putting yourself front and center to give your opinion you have to be a sort of you ha you have to sign up to be a contrarian by the very you know unless you're a boring comedian by its very intents and purposes you are paid to look at the world via a different sort of lens so you're gonna you're bound to slip up or anger some people along your way and you have to also know that you might say the wrong thing. You might overstep the line so bad that the entire, if it'll feel like the entire, the entirety of society just says, no, you're no more, you're cancelled. And you have to realize that those friends of yours that you had in comedy aren't your friends anymore because they don't want to be cancelled with you. It's equivalent to when you get fired at work and everyone knows and no one wants to talk to you and you have to kind of like leave awkwardly. You know? <laughs> right? That's what happens in, in LA. It's the same thing when you get cancelled. Like, no one wants to give you eye contact. No one wants to touch you. They don't want to get that sort of, like, sacked, fired stink all over themselves. They don't want to get a talking to later either. No one wants that. They might talk to you later. They might give you a little text message or send you something on Facebook or Instagram. But talk to you in person, at, like, face-to-face? -face, or be seen with you in a workplace? No. And I think it's a bit, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's naive because I don't think that's fair. I just think it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an unfortunate character trait to have when you're in LA. To be as warm and open and as friendly and as willing to share your love and be in a friendship relationship with people close one it can sometimes really bite you in the ass especially in scenes like this where essentially people are kind of grading their friendships based on what they can offer right and i've been in that position myself that kind of cool london sort of scene whether it be in the music or fashion is very much like that people kind of align themselves to people who they can maybe get something from right if you post a picture with this girl you get this man that likes it's sick it's disgusting but it is what it is right and you have to know that that is part of the game so you don't you shouldn't be angered when you go out with these said people they come back home and upload pictures of themselves and you happen to be cropped out it is the game what can you do carry on a little bit more I'm not salty about it, though, by the way, but I am a little bit like, oh, that sucks because I thought, you know, I thought I had friends, you know, you know, I thought it was like, but it's obviously not. You know what I mean? It's like it's it, 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 it you can't help but feel fucked up about it if you were in my position. Of course, you can't help but feel that, but you have to understand as well, they're not your friends. That's the issue you had. The moment you can, I think people listen to everyone. The moment you can start looking at things, and I guess, because I don't know, and again, I'm the worst person to say this because I don't really have many friends. I, I tend to keep myself quite closed off, but I would imagine your actual, actual friends are people that have known you for a long period of time, people that can maybe talk to you in a way that other people can't talk to you, people that maybe, um, I don't know, you have this connection that doesn't necessarily. It's not as surface as you happen to be in the same sort of field of work. It's an actual, you know, friendship, kinship that you've built over the years. So to confuse that with knowing somebody that you work with really well or maybe hanging out with them after in a bar, to confuse that with friendship is, I don't know, it's really dumb, I think, in my opinion. Especially in LA, especially in any kind of small scene, I think you should never think that. Like, if you're in a DIY indie scene, right, you're trying to set up a band and you think everyone that you're meeting in that scene is your friend, you're also, you know, you're also a little bit naive in that respect because they're not. Especially if you're not winning or if you're not essentially pushing things in your lane or getting places where you want to, you're not really going to make any new friends because, you know, no one really wants to be near you because you stink because you're not got, you know you not become successful in the time period they have or because you haven't got a certain show whatever it may be and it happens often and i just think um for all the gifts that those little micro scenes can give you in terms of access and platform and proximity right because you know the fact that he's in la is a great thing anyway right you get to work in a comedy store a place where everyone thinks is the world's best comedy club um it's great, but you just take it for what it is. A platform for you to tell jokes in front of a captive audience amongst some of your best, some of the best peers in your industry, you know, because that's what all comedians want, you know, the validation of other comedians. And you should just kind of keep it moving. If you happen to find somebody that you can um, say that, okay, this person is going to be my best man at my wedding, that's incredible. But you should really be thinking about people back home who, 
you know you've really grown up with or people that you've been on the road with people you've been in the trench with people that you started open mics with that sh those people should be maybe your your friends but la comedians la people the ones that you know chris Alea is a good example chris Alea gets everyone ratings right every podcast chris Alea goes on is like minimum what hundred thousand views on youtube minimum right he's a hot ticket um that people bring him on their shows all the time find a kid bloody rinse the, um chris Alea absolute rinsing before he started his own podcast and then he gets in some trouble again admittedly it's a serious accusation right he was basically as accused of you know having um sexual relations with underage girls or tr attempting to in some regards but it kind of transpires quite quickly that that wasn't the case they don't back him they don't defend him in public instead they start crying they start distancing themselves deleting pictures and stuff so to expect those people to be loyal to you as a friend in terms of playing computer games or setting up podcast shows is really 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 naive because at least with chris Talia, he's got you know he's got numbers to back him up he's got a cookie cutter image cookie cutter sort of image right is that the way term he's got a netflix special uh he's in netflix shows right so he's an he's the actual person you should be attempting to like bend over backwards for right making all kind of excuses for him but they didn't they still didn't want to do that even to him so if they can do that to him you should really expect if you're an eric griffin or somebody on that level you should expect worse right you should expect them to drop you like a hot potato if you, your picture doesn't get a certain amount of likes on instagram I don't know, man. I just thought it was interesting to kind of look at as just as a kind of byproduct of, as not but another sort of representation of how you should maneuver in different sub micro cultures, micro subcultures, whatever they may be, right? How you should how you should navigate and knowing where you actually sit and being all right with that too, being being okay with being like the you know the cool friend that kind of adds to the party instead of being one of the mainstays even though your experience tells you you should be i think that should be the way forward so again i feel sorry for eric griffin i still think he's a super funny guy i think griffin griffin is one of my favorite podcasts actually i think it's really really um interesting podcast he's really introspective really kind open dude i think his appearances on the rick glassman show are really cool as well definitely check him out on there and just generally has a good egg but I think he's being a bit naive when it comes to expecting LA people to be your actual friends' friends. That's like a little bit, a little bit naive in my experience from what I've seen anyway online. Um, next we have, what is this? Uh, I put this is effing per. Okay, yeah, this is this is actually perfect and sort of encapsulates what's going on. This is maybe um um. Okay, let's load up first before I talk to you about it. But this is a really funny video. I didn't think we from a comedian called Ryan Long. Um, he's done a few of these sort of like viral little um, shorts taking the piss out of our current um, political and cultural climate at the moment and this is something I've been thinking about quite a lot in terms of um, what's happening especially on techno Twitter there's a section of Twitter where you follow um, very um, outspoken figures within the techno music industry or in the techno scene dance music scene who have very particular views about how the scene should be pushed or taken forward right and a lot of it seems to be what people were going through in other industries ages ago and it's sort of suddenly sort of um catched in with the dj culture right or dj scene um there's been calls of whitewashing lineups of yeah whitewashing history of techno uh stale lineups that aren't necessarily representative of the time we're at at the moment agencies not representing people loads of really mad shit i'm gonna get in into later but essentially it seems like a it seems like there's a battle between like the woke side of twitter and the techno bros who are just like you know give me dance give me mdma leave me alone um, but I think this video encapsulates how far it can go. Um, this is by Ryan Log. It says here, when wokes and race and racists actually agree on everything. I'm going to play it for you now. And load. When me and Brad first met, I didn't think we'd get along, but turns out we kind of agree on everything. Your, Your racial, racial identity, identity is the, the most, most important thing. thing. Everything, everything should be looked at through the lens of race. race. Jinx, you owe me a Coke. <laughs> if you're listening, Ryan Long's wearing a shirt that says racist and he's uh, his partner in crime is wearing a shirt that says woke and they're essentially saying that 
the the opposite ends of of both spectrums right the far far left and the far far right i have, have actually more in common than they actually let on it's really hilarious we both have a lot of opinions about people of color even though we barely know any i say colored people but as long as we're classifying them we both think minorities are a united group who think the same and act the same and vote the same you don't want to lose your black card sorry i don't know i just think we should roll back <laughs> discrimination laws so we can hire based on race again Jinx. That's you amazing. owe me a coke Hey, tell them what you told me yesterday. White actors should only do voices for white cartoon characters. Been saying that for years. Stick to your own. Us oh white people, God. we have so much privilege. I agree. It is a privilege to be white. Ask him about interracial dating. <laughs> All I said is that black men who date white women have internalized racism, and white men that date ethnic women are fetishizing them. That's Guys amazing. against interracial dating now. Like, am I being pranked? And you actually find that quite often happens, a lot, especially on social media. That the ones that have the most to say about interracial dating it's like those kind of videos you've seen um, from Portland or from wherever they may be where those Antifa folks, especially like a really angry white person will be shouting at some black officer that they're a sellout. And it's like, whoa, this is a mind trip, right? This Caucasian lady is essentially berating this black officer for not being black enough when he, she herself is nowhere near black. And it's like incredible, right? That race would take you that far. Did Boomer put you up to this? Ugh, you know that taco place is white-owned? White people should be making white foods, like Kraft macaroni and cheese, no seasoning, not even salt. It's like he's a mind reader. I mean, I've been pushing for segregation forever, and my man does what? I created an improv comedy show exclusively for ethnic people. <laughs> I segregates comedy on my birthday. White people need to stop wearing dreadlocks, and they need to stop appropriating black people's music. Shaved heads and country music, the way God intended. You know all white people are racist. I'm listening. Even if you have a black wife or a black friend group, you're still really racist. You know, we just kicked a guy out of the organization for having a black girlfriend, but if you can promise me he's still really racist, we'll consider letting him back in. Black people should only shop at black businesses. Jesus Christ, it's incredible. I recommend you check out the whole thing. I'll link it below in the show notes, but it's incredible, but also really um, illuminating in terms of where we're at, um, especially again, when I talk about techno Twitter, it's like, I really do wonder what the end goal is with that. Actually, I'm not sure to get into it now because I think that's a good place to actually start from, right? Um, I'll skip a couple of bits, but essentially, um, where is it? Where is she? So if you're not familiar, there is a section of Twitter that specifically, well, that I kind of follow some main people on there who are very outspoken within the dance music industry, which I've mentioned before, right? And they have, they've essentially taken this, um, what we're having now, you no, know, this current thing that we're going on now at the moment with um, far left leaning ideologies, you know, permeating through um, the current kind of political climate at the moment and people fighting back against what they call the alt right and, you know, um, nationalism and all this sort of stuff. It's just a weird time in culture at the moment, right? But it feels as if like the progressives or the people on the left have essentially won the war of ideas for the most part right most people tend to agree on the whole immigration is bad like, about immigration is bad they tend to agree on the state basically giving you free health care whatever all these sort of like general stuff that people kind of agree on in terms of the you know general consensus in the world at the moment so the right is sort of like you know they're sort of losing influence in that regard some people would argue against that but you know that's generally kind of where we're at so there's a group of people who have essentially made it their mission to maybe rewrite the narrative in dance and music, right? To rewrite um, what actually occurs, what goes on, what the lineups look like, um, the sensibilities of it, the tone of some of the words that are used, the pictures, who is basically put up front in terms of representing the scene or the culture, right? They feel, they feel as if it doesn't necessarily represent what they kind of see week in week out or when you go out to clubs and it doesn't right i have to explain, admit that myself um when i go out you know it's, disapp it's disappointing when you go to like a you know a rave or a promotion and they you know keep booking the same five or six djs the same sort of approach um it's the same way of kind of promoting how they sort of um launch the event how they sell tickets the spaces they use it's all just kind of a bit stale um because for the most part these guys invest a lot of money into setting up these events and they don't want to take any risks right they're risk adverse for the most part so they just do what no they know works do i think it's malicious no i don't really think it's malicious i don't think they purposely get up and try and fuck over you know non-white 
artist in the scene i just think certain people have a tendency to pick what they know or certain people just do what happens happened to me which i benefited from if you do a really good job in one place with one promoter with one bar owner whatever it may be and they like your attitude they like you know that you come in promptly you deal with yourself professionally you know you play um well to the crowd they just keep you on because they know that they don't they don't have to think too much about it so i don't think that's that's really um that's necessarily a bad thing but anyway let's get back on the, this thing because I, I keep rambling on but this story i wanted to speak about was concerning black madonna so black madonna got a bit of hot bother because black madonna isn't actually a black madonna she's not in a sense she doesn't look like madonna from the 80s uh but in blackface she doesn't look like a girl that happens to be black that also looks like madonna she just happens to be a white dj lady who happens to have the name black madonna now under her um if you listen to what she has to say the reason why she explains that name is the reason why she chose that name is because it's got some sort of catholic roots right there is a saint um there is a deity um in catholicism referred to oftenly as the black madonna now how that black madonna actually got the shade of black that you commonly see in window towers is a bit you know dubious whether or not she was rolling around in the ash pit somewhere whether or not she's a fan of michelle lamy's style of makeup whether she was an early mua on youtube before there was a youtube we don't know whether she was black or whether she was in full black no black face black body right we don't know if that's an actual thing but regardless it always him again and i'm not the wokey you know give me more gigs because i'm black guy but i have to admit when i first saw her i was a bit taken aback right because she doesn't look black at all right she 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 probably won't mind me saying this she's a very pale woman so for her to say that she's a black madonna it really just strike me a bit as odd but it also is kind of par of course really sort of like standard procedure when it comes to uh being a dj i think for the most part most dj's names are a bit naff most dj's start off with what three or four names i probably i probably went through about six before you settle on one that works and sometimes there isn't a reason to it it's just something you kind of maybe i don't know you might have saw on a postcard it might have been something that was used on a flyer it might have been um a nickname you got from some drunken promoter in the middle of rome i don't know it could be whatever and if it works it sounds good who are you to go in chuck that away somewhere especially after you called yourself hydro like i did back in the day so i don't think it was done with any sort of malicious intent i just think she sort of picked the name randomly and then had to sort of like figure out something to uh give herself a reason as to why that name sort of worked and then over time people of course for like i've always said previously i just think i'm a big believer in cancer culture does exist but i'm also a big believer in if you get cancer it's usually an indication people don't like you that's usually an indication of it. If you do get cancelled, it's like people just don't like you. So I think for whatever reason, I'm not sure what it is, whether or not it's because of that boiler room video. Do you remember the famous boiler room video where she's destroying the, let's see if I can find it, where she's destroying the mixer? I'm not sure it's because of that. I'm not sure it's because of her being a white woman DJ. I'm not sure it's because of her political views, which I have no idea what they are. But whatever reason, people just don't like her and it didn't give her any, any, um, benefit of doubt and maybe her explanations didn't help either but essentially it got so bad in the recent weeks they've made a petition about her changing her name and all this sort of good stuff and she just eventually ended up changing it to guess what the blessed madonna the blessed madonna I'm not sure if that's better or not but it's a weird story and i'm gonna read it out to you now because i think ra did a good job of rounding it up let's get up on here on screen for you guys to see and we'll go through this right now cool so here we go so Mar maria stamper i didn't know that was her name changes her name from the black madonna this is the following it says maria stamper f uh, formerly known as the black madonna has changed her artist name to the blessed madonna right uh, Stamper made the change a day after the Detroit artist Monty Luke launched an online petition titled The Black Madonna is Time to Change Your Name, um, which was supported by King Brit and amongst others. Uh, Luke called the name a problematic, offensive and cultural appropriation. Read the full statement here. He goes into it really hard, to be honest. He says it follows. It says um, uh, she's this is her comment. Um, she said writes the following she says my artist name has been a point of controversy and confusion and pain and frustration that distracts from the things that are thousands of times more important than any single word in that name 
um, she says, she continues here, we're living in extraordinary times. This is a small part of much bigger conversation, but we all have a responsibility to try and affect positive change in any way we can. Criticism of Stamper's use of Black Madonna goes back years. In an interview with Quieter in 2017, she defended it by claiming that as a Vat Catholic, the name was a part of her culture. Before announcing the Blessed Madonna, she briefly changed her social media handles to the Black Law School as the logo is being. Oh. <laughs> Man, this is a funny story. So, again, I think people don't like her anyway. So, I think you have to just treat it with that sort of lens. People just don't like the woman. I don't know why, they just don't like her. The name change, I think that original Quietest interview was a bit telling because it felt as if she was coming off. She came across a bit defensive, um, which I then explains to me that she didn't really have an idea why she chose that name. It just happened to be a name that stuck, that worked, right? Like I said, picking a DJ name is bloody difficult. It's like picking track titles for, you know, stuff that you produce. It's really, really difficult to do, um, especially if you try and think about it any, any longer than five seconds. It's like, ah, oh, suddenly it, you come up with naff names. So she found a good name. She stuck with it. And then, you know, the internet reacted, right? You can't, you know, you're not in charge of how people react to stuff. And then people saw that she didn't necessarily buckle underneath the first bit of pressure that was just like change her name that's offensive and she's a co-op this weird sort of catholic stance which i don't know if it's real or not regardless of what it is i just think it's interesting to see what's going on because i think at the heart of this it's not really a black madonna thing i just think there's a lot of pain going on at the moment there's a lot of hurt a lot of anger a lot of frustration in the scene and most of it i think has to do with this idea that a certain a segment of the scene especially the people that are non-whites right let's say the blacks the browns the asians in the scene that happen to be djs artists ma managers it, mostly i don't know let's say the front facing um mostly the people that play behind the decks they feel as if they don't get a fair crack of the whip so you look at somebody like a black madonna right they see her um let me see if i can get this video they see the black madonna doing the black Madonna boiler room yep mixer see if I can get it up on here someone someone's definitely got it here on YouTube 100% right yeah there we go fade of destruction so they see the black Madonna doing this and they go to themselves surely surely I can take that If you're not seeing this it, and you think it sounds horrible it looks even worse she's essentially pulling um the crossfade on the mixer side to side aggressively in a manner where she's essentially jerking the mixer back and forth in a way and you can just see people's faces behind her she's doing it like ouch it's hurting everyone's face ears there's looks of confusion anger frustration and just general bewilderment at what she's doing <laughs> And again, I don't think it's fair, right? Because I think she's a pretty decent DJ. She's probably a better producer than she is a DJ. She's got some great remixes out there. But I just think for a certain segment of people out there, they just must look at her and think, how the hell have you been able to go so far in your career whilst being so average at what you do? Or whilst being so ordinary? Or by by being such mediocre as I am, right? Or whatever it may be the case. And I don't think that's her fault really i just think it's a fault or a consequence of the scene we're in i just think there's a lack of clubs there's a lack of clubs willing to take chances there's lack of people actually putting this in line their kind of money where their mouth is people always talk a big game on social about how the scene has changed but there's rarely any people really coming up and putting their money where their mouth is and opening their own clubs for the issues people have again i have issues myself with what subclub did right subclub went out and you know raised money from people who are on benefits when they have a fucking co-founder that's you know a multi-millionaire that's taking a piss but it's their business right they can do whatever they want with it i think if you have a lot of opinions about how some people conduct their lineup or they put their things together you should be trying your best especially now especially during this moment where everyone's got their kind of everyone's sort of got their wallets and their purses open and they've got their eyes and ears <coughs> and their minds willing to 
receive a different sort of perspective there should be opportunity where if you're marginalized or you feel as if you're not getting a fair crack open a scene you should be trying to gather your resources pull your friends together and trying to secure investment alone wherever you may be so you can open up your own spot i think that's very much needed now i don't think we're in a position i just don't like as much as I kind of have an issue with what Black Madonna named herself in the first place, I also think all the vitriol she's been getting is just unfair. It's not her fault that the scene propped her up. It's not her fault that she got further in her career based on this kind of racially ambiguous name, right? It is what it is, isn't it? Like, it's just a name. I don't know. I, I'm sure there's artists out there, especially artists that are non-white that moved over to Berlin during the heyday that gave themselves a weird sort of like German sounding industrial name to push their career forward. And no one's moaning about that. So that isn't necessarily the issue. I just think there's such a lack of opportunity in the scene that people are getting so angry during this time where everyone's sort of like, you know, arguing about what's going on in society at the moment they want to change things but i don't think cancelling black madonna is the way i think the op the way is for us to have more platforms to play more spaces that we can play in more promoters and punters willing to take a chance on a lineup that doesn't just contain the top 20 voted djs on ra right a one that kind of reflects the scene in general what the kind of mood is going on at the moment i've said it many times i've always enjoyed I've enjoyed more than nights I've been out where there's obviously been a girl on the lineup. And I've said it even play, people sometimes don't believe me, but it's definitely true. You can walk into a, a, a nightclub in London, not know what the lineup is and be able to tell and feel in the air based on the music playing, based on the ambience. If there's somebody playing, that's not just, that's a non bro, right? Like a girl or someone, right? Someone playing behind the decks. You can just tell because there's a certain way of playing that you're used to hearing year in year out because that's how anyone plays it in the nightclub so when you get somebody that's a non-cis white male playing in the nightclub it, it immediately sounds different it looks different even in a club right because they instantly bring their friends and their friends bring their friends it just makes for a far better cohesive nightclub experience but i think it's unfair to expect soco loco for instance to suddenly start booking these people that are complaining on twitter it's not going to happen right because they, their scenes don't even mash well right they um it's, we're, we're in the same sort of subculture but our audiences are completely different right I, I i don't think the people that i go to party with sometimes on a sunday morning in Berkheim will be comfortable going to circle loco and i don't think it's a bad thing i just don't think it's their scene what we need is we need more spaces similar, similar to like a Grease Mueller, similar to a Fold, similar to a Berghain in all our different sort of cultural hotspots around Europe or around the world so that we have the opportunity to play more often. And then also be given the opportunity when we graduate from those spots to give an opportunity to f go and play at Fabric, to go and play at XOYO, to go and play at, I don't know, Ministry of Sound, wherever these big places are, right? That's the what that's what's needed at the moment, but we don't have it. So what we have is a, a group of DJs on tech on techno Twitter complaining who are really good, who are really talented in their own right, but they don't necessarily have that big room, big festival experience or big room, let's say big room, glitzy room, whatever it may be, experience. So there's no way for this there's, so they have to jump steps and then jumping steps is probably hurting them more, right? They go from playing, you know, dingy nightclub somewhere in the middle of berlin to suddenly then playing on the biggest stage when you don't have that experience in between which everyone else did have so i think we need more in between spaces we need a place where you can go to that's 500 600 cap or you can play weekly right in an environment where you're free to do what you want and then when there's opportunity for you to go to play in circle local you know what to do in that sort of room or with that kind of people that kind of clientele um, that's what I think is basically going on. I just think there's a lot of anger, a lot of frustration. It's definitely not a Black Madonna thing because, again, like I said, she's a fairly competent DJ. She's probably a better producer than she is a DJ, a better remixer for sure, but she's not really stealing any spots really, in it? She just happens to be one of the only, what, five or six prominent women DJs out there at the moment who are doing bits, but because the people underneath her are so far behind in terms of money earned or in terms of platforms that they play at, it just doesn't make sense sometimes, isn't it? Because she essentially jumps her steps herself and you think you jumps her steps yourself too. But I think the best possible way forward is for collectively, for some people to come together, I don't know who, put their money where their mouth is, just open their own spot that essentially advocates for or essentially gives a platform to marginalized groups within the dance music scene. I just think that's the best way forward. I just don't think cancelling Black Madonna is going to serve a purpose because those people that book her will never book the people that can complain or in a large or meaningful way. I don't think it will happen. But 
what may happen that I'm hopeful about is that a place like Bergheim or one of those big institutions sort of sets the pace. That could be something that might happen. This reckoning might push a place like Bergheim to be like, you know what? We're going to put our money where our mouths are. We're not going to announce anything. We're just going to start when we reopen. We're just going to start booking mad people who happen to be the non kind of traditional Bergheim DJ, right? No more Adam Byers, no more, I don't know, not Ben Clock, he's a flopping resident there. But you know that kind of, you know, Mateus Tanzan, whatever these people's names are, right? And they start booking a lot more very DJs in terms of what they represent, their styles and stuff. That could be pretty cool. And they just do it silently. Or maybe they announce it, but they just do it in sort of like a show and prove way. Like every club notch, every kind of knack of how you, how you pronounce that, um, every Friday and Saturday or every weekend, they have a lineup that contains, you know, let's say half of it is people who are identified as non-white. That'd be pretty sick. And it just set a precedent in the scene where everyone just have to copy it by hook and crook, just have to copy it. But then of course you come into a problem of like different scenes might not have the DJs to support that kind of, you know, um, to support that sort of initiative. And you get some issues in terms of giving people a platform who are just based on their color, which gets into the video I spoke about earlier. But that could be a way forward because I just think canceling a black Madonna, giving her a lot of hate online because she happens to have a, she happens to landed on a good name that suited her for a while is a bit unfair in my opinion but hey what can you do but now she's known the best madonna hopefully people leave her alone hopefully she stops abusing um, mixers too that could be a good start and we get to a far better place because it's just sad to see everybody bickering especially in the dance music scene man. i just think we're we're a small subculture a small little scene we sort of are it sort of is yeah most yeah anyone that gets into it gets into it for a sense of escapism right you don't necessarily want your politics to be reflected in that sort of thing but you know it is what it is nowadays um we're in a world where your politics affects everything that you do for some reason um it's annoying it really is it's frustrating but it just is the case if that is the case let's try and you know i don't believe in creating utopias but you can create some kind of utopia in dance music scene you can create your own version of it right whether it's putting together a day rave a day f a weekend festival putting together some money for uh, to rent a warehouse space that you do parties out on the low there's got to be something that we can do ourselves instead of pointing the thing at the man or at the person that you feel as if is taking your spot when they're not really taking your spot you don't really want to be playing or maybe they do i don't know maybe they do maybe just they just do want that job they want their position they want to delete her from but i don't think that's true i just think they just look at it and just think she's shit i should be doing that and i think that's fair but i think it's also fair to you to be like you know what maybe just do it in your own spot so you don't ever have to answer to someone like her that could be better to go forward i don't know what do i know i'm just a small kid living in a big city i don't know anything but yeah big up the blessed madonna big up the blessed madonna and big up everyone that actually got her to change her name i think that's a pretty decent thing because i've reading that quietest interview she didn't want to go through with it she was really really against it she didn't want to buckle under the pressure of the woke mob and now look right takes one unfortunate passing of a black man in america and then suddenly everyone's doing the right thing for some dubious some, for doing the right thing for the wrong reasons because they don't want to be looked up they don't want to be on the wrong side of history quote unquote it's just god damn it just do the right thing to begin with anyway in it make everyone's lives easier but hey what can you do and you wonder too don't you have any friends as well i keep saying friends thing but it's like imagine you're called the black madonna and you look like the black madonna and you you tell your friends what you do and they ask you what your dj name is you don't cringe a bit you don't feel a bit weird telling what you're telling your friends back home you have no idea what the scene's about what your dj name is i just don't it just would have been an easy thing just to avoid for me in that regard but i don't know again what do i know what do i know what else we want to get into here before we head off Oh, uh, Kanye losing his mind. I thought that was funny. Should we talk about that? Yeah, that's that's funny. Kanye lost his mind, what, for the, I don't know, millionth time, right? Uh, he keeps losing his mind. He keeps going through something, some sort of mental breakdown, breakthrough, whatever you may be calling in. I don't know, man. As a big Kanye West fan, as somebody who's kind of inspired by his rah-rah speeches and his, you know, um, wild aspiration and his ability to execute at the highest of levels right and he's just obsessive he's obsessive drive for perfection in artistry man seeing this version of kanye sucks balls 
it's just so deflating to see his version of Kanye now. Again, this might just be his final form. You know, people, we all grow up, we all get older. He might just turn into the old cranky dude that says wild stuff on social or is prone for the odd outbursts here and there. And it just might be, a, this also might be a byproduct of, you know, you can only get genius level shoes and clothing design and pr presentation and album production and album, all that sort of stuff. You can only get that at that level and by having this kind of periods of manic episode manic episode periods right or periods of manic uh, yeah whatever right that's the only way you can get it maybe that's a thing but just as a fan of you know a fan of what pre-2015 kanye you just look at this one you're just like god man what a what a sad way to end that story but again you know, I don't think it's sad because I just don't think it's that big of an issue. I don't think he's going for a breakthrough. I just think this is just his way of kind of permeating culture. He always, always done this, right? He's always had the ability to kind of, you know, uh, thread his needle um, onto the timeline, right? To kind of disturb things, give you a little jolt, a bit of kick up the ass. And he does it perfectly. And this time around, he was complaining about Dre, Chris Jenner, talking about the calm. He did the Kanye meme again. Um, and he's, he mentioned his lyric. He's um, bemoaning the fact that people are trying to lock him up because they're saying he's insane because he wants to run um, for the presidency in 2020. Um, it's just a whole lot of madness, but I just don't think he's going crazy. I really don't. I just think this is just Kanye. This is just who he is now at the moment. Um, I think the crazy thing, we shouldn't really take much notice of it because by his account, he seems to be fine. He went off the meds he was hasn't been more clearer he says the meds stunted him somewhat shape or form and in general we also have to be aware that he's not our dad isn't it he's got his whole family around him who suddenly don't give a fuck it looks like right the collections essentially every time he's had the episode so far where he explodes and goes into some sort of outburst there's always a counter story that props up on tmz that the family's worried that he's going through an episode, they worry he's not taking the medication. Always. It's just like clockwork. And again, TMZ is a garbage uh, platform, right? But it's fairly safe to assume they have a contact close to the Kardashians, right? Close to the Jenners. That is, when they give them information, when it comes to their sort of like interpersonal relationships, we can sort of be led to believe that it's partly true, if not fully true. So for somebody in their family to be leaking information that there's you know that member of their family is going for an episode and kind of counteracting it with other stories in the press instead of just helping the person in real life it says a lot about the family he's unfortunately um a part of at the moment right he's, he's been able to you know um bring into this world four amazing kids he's met the love of his life but being an extended family it's really an unfortunate situation because you know they have to protect their interests as well you know i'm not blaming the kardashians but god damn it your husband's going through a manic episode and you're feeding stories to the press you're getting publicists to leak info that he's off his meds and he's not well at the moment it's just a crazy situation to go through the the tweets himself i've got a collection of them now I'll probably want to show you now on the web oh no this the first clip the, this one was funny this one was when he was at his um what was that he was at his uh rally campaign rally and he started screaming about his mum wanting to abort him. My mom saved my life. My dad wanted to abort me. <laughs> my dad my mom saved, mom saved, saved my, my life. life. There would have been no Kanye West because my dad was too busy. There's a dweeb behind him trying to make him feel good. And again, um, it's just interesting when these things happen, right? When Kanye is like on, when Kanye is presenting some amazing show in the middle of Paris somewhere, right? With this amazing dome created by this influential architect and all these incredible interior designers and all these amazing people in the scene out there. All these mates, all these sort of social media mates that I was always jacking them off under the table, they're quick to post stuff, right? Thank you, yay for the Yeezys. Thank you, this, we sharing that. But the moment he has any kind of dummy moment or he, he comes out and does this sort of stuff, 
they're all eerily quiet in it it's just funny just as optically to see all these mates that be posting their thank you notes from team easy that are jacking themselves off because they got an invitation to the show or posting a picture of themselves backstage somewhere do you remember when he has an actual real issue that you could actually um say was an important thing if you happen to be his friend crickets they know where to be found where are they Where's the little statements? Where's the little pep talks about we're going to be there for our friend? Nothing. You don't hear anything. He's just there crying in a bulletproof vest with people around him that you, no one recognizes, right? For the most part, you don't see them on Instagram. You don't see them shared on the meme pages or the street star pages. These are all weird people that the only ones left around at the moment, it seems like. And here he is telling every, telling everyone his business, oversharing. <laughs> No cap, but Kanye kind of cries my, like my dad. My dad cries like that sometimes. You know, your dad's like, you know, they're just, this is like their last end. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. What do, what do you say? This? Imagine just being a campaign rally where you're having to, you're having to, convince people that you are a, i love the 2020 back of his head though you're having to convince people at a campaign rally that's the purpose of it right convince them that you are a stable enough genius to lead the country or to earn their uh, ballot right that's what you want to convince them and that's the way you that's how you go out there insane and then of course not, the actual the tweets themselves are probably the best things we've seen in a while from kanye in terms of just how manic tense he is at the moment and also just a fair reflection of it's a good little snapshot into like what, what he's where his priorities are and the things that he kind of is annoyed about still here on screen so you got one on the top left which is funny right chris don't play with me you and that calm yeah i'm not allowed any around my children <laughs> which has to lock me up right <laughs> which is funny because of course chris jenner's um i don't know fiance partner does look a lot like calm yeah right um or eerily enough but it's also maybe a reflection into where they are as a family fractured right in the space where christian might have done a tried to attempt to get him locked up which you never know kind of it might be a, a lot of hyperbole but just imagine putting this sort of information out there being a celebrity of kanye's stature and that maybe is the problem maybe there's been no one so far that we've known in the modern era that's been because again mike jackson was big too but he didn't have social media Social media is a game changer. It amplifies your voice so much more. That's probably why we don't. That's probably why there's a big chasm between. Uh, let's say artists a good example. That's why it's such a big chasm between maybe like a Lil Uzi Vert and a Rich the Kid in terms of actual fan bases, because on paper they might look similar, right? In terms of Instagram followers and all that sort of stuff, right? But when it gets down to actually having fans, it's a whole different ball game. But I think social media skews it because it gives everyone a platform. So you could have the same amount of followers as him, as Lil Uzi Vert, but do you have actual fans that will buy tickets to attend your show or attend your tour? That's a whole different ball game. And I think Kanye has that ability, right? He's always sold numbers. He's always made, he's always, you know, if you care about first week numbers, he's always had really good first week numbers. People buy the stuff he makes, clothes, fashion, shoes. People attend, yeah, people attend these shows. And then you have the social media aspect of it where he's, his voice gets amplified even further. So people that are far removed from hip-hop, don't give an F about stuff, will see his tweets, will see his communication. Whereas back in the day, if you're a Michael Jackson fan, you don't only a Michael Jackson fan will find out about what he's doing, his new outfits, his new dance routine. You have to kind of go and seek that information out. But at the moment, especially considering how viral he is at the moment, he can just be in everyone's phone sim simultaneously. It's amazing, isn't it, really? So maybe that's part of the... Con that, that is the issue. He's just so big as a celebrity. He's so rich. His influence is so large that there's no other way you can be. If he was really centred and zen like a J. Cole at his level of fame, people probably look him a bit weird. This probably makes a lot of sense. And it continues. It says, um, come and get me. This is an exodus like Pusha said and from the exodus song from a few years ago it says here kim tried to bring a doctor to lock me up which is a good indication i think i think that's good to hear because people like myself are big believers that a lot of these issues come because you know his family are willing to 
accept the good that comes of being associated with Kanye, having Kanye being a part of your family. You have this maverick, once in a generation creative genius, be your partner, or be the father of your children, or be a consultant with the way that your family present themselves. It's a good thing, right? It can only help, but it does come with some bad moments, and the bad moments are very public and very loud. So it can feel to us on the outside that, hey, what are these family doing? But sometimes there's only so much you can do, right? If if they if they actually, because I wonder how far you have to get before you get sectioned. Is it does it, is it have to be demonstrable? Is it something that you have to maybe give evidence? Like, do you have to go into a sit down with a meeting with somebody? Like, how far does it have to go before someone actually comes up with a white jacket and pushing it back of a van? And again, like I said, I just don't think he's in that state at the moment. I just think this is Kanye and people are just not accepting it. They kind of think he's going to have this come to Kanye moment where he's going to suddenly relax and take things easy and start reading books and become a bit more rational. I don't think that's ever going to be him. This is the Kanye that he is want. He's always going to be this guy. And now he has money. He has proper F you money, proper, right? You can't chat anything to Kanye anymore. He's got everything he needs in terms of resources, with his fashion with the stuff he's doing with Yeezy he's got other stuff he's doing with design outside of those things other project furniture stuff he's doing buildings he's exactly where he went to be creatively and artistically so this is the worst time to ever expect him to rein it in personality wise why would he he's won already he's done everything he set out to do this is him in his final form and I think for some fans or some you know casual fans it might be a hard pill to swallow but I think this is it. This is this is your Kanye going forward. I don't think he's nuts. And um, it continues. He might have bipolar. Don't get me wrong. He might have he, he might have bipolar disease, but I don't think he's having a mental breakdown or going for an episode. I just don't. I just think this is your Kanye. He continues. Says I put my life on the line for my children. That North mother would never sell a sex rape. And I'm not sure. Did he mean to say sex tape or say sex rape? Because that's a really really crazy thing to say. And may or again, they're very consistent though, because Kanye's always been uncomfortable with the fact that he married Kim Kardashian. It seemed like he's always complaining about her posing nude. It's like I think Kim's been fairly consistent about who she's been over the years since we've seen her in a public eye. She hasn't changed. So for him to suddenly try and change the way that she conducts her business, the way that she lives her life is really unfair. So that is mad. If you meant to say table rape, I don't know. Continues says, yeah, Chris call Chris and Kim call me now. He keeps ranting. Imagine telling your your mother in law and your wife to call you via Twitter. Absolutely wild. Like, and the winter she always showed me love, but when I told her I was going to Gap, she looked at me like I was crazy. Then she called me back, kissing my ass. It's like what? Why are you still talking about Anna Winter? See, our fashion book is gonna go in the dump soon, right? It's probably gonna go out of business. Anna Winter hasn't been again. This this is just good, is as a it's another window into his obsession with um, figures of influence within a certain group within a certain subculture of or somewhere he's trying to get into a scene, right? In terms of fashion, he's obsessed. Louis Wilson, um, Anna Winter. Um, who else is the person? Um, he's got all these names that he names that he's, he wants to be a part of or be friends with or be friend. But he's embarrassing and probably saying it's going to help. And again, it's Anna Winter. It's 2020. She hasn't got the influence or the swag that she once had back in the day. Maybe in the industry, in the scene behind the scenes, she might have. But he's quite full. He's quite. Um, Kanye's way seems to be, you know with with the avant-garde he's always kind of push he's always kind of pushing the young voices forward this isn't the person to really push now and no one gives it i don't i don't think kids in csm now give a shit about what Anna Winter did back in the day they're trying to rewrite their own history so it's a bit strange one but again who, who cares move on to that one uh drake of course the, obviously there's always a, a, a there's always a little um drake thing because he's always in the back of his head this is i put my life on on he put my life on god that North's mum would never photograph her doing Playboy, and that's on God. I'm at the ranch. Come and get me. <laughs> Sheer Leboeuf is cap because I'm guessing he didn't attend one of their fashion shoots. Just ugh. seeing Kanye like this is just distressing, man. Just as, again, just as a fan of the Kanye that would just get you inspired to design a whole lookbook, create a line sheet, put together some ideas for furniture, make a logo, just put a beat together, design a flyer. That Kanye is long gone, mate, long gone. It says here, yeah, West Children will never do a Playboy. It's a really cute picture of him and his kids. Another tweet here says, I love my wife. My family must ha ha must be must live next to me. It's not up to E or NBA and C anymore. 
So it, this is another good window into how fractured that family is. I'm assuming with keeping the Kardashians is essentially mandating or requiring them to live in LA. I assume to film the show, they can't actually go to Wyoming because why would he want to film a show in Wyoming? Unless Kim doesn't want to live in Wyoming. I don't know, but that's quite bad to see that happening. And him airing that in public isn't good either. you got MBS, NBC locked up Bill Cosby. He's fascinated with Bill Cosby. It's odd. Do you think, that's why I think Kanye with a few money is actually an interest, far more interesting interview because he's just so say what he wants. Do you actually think he legitimately thinks NBC sort of like set up Bill Cosby, that he was taken down? Is that what he actually believes? That he doesn't think Bill Cosby... Yeah, he said the loads that, right? Bill Cosby's innocent. But do you think he truly believes that? That there's this, like, you know, nefarious group out there, this shadowy entity that planted, um, you know, uh, I don't know, ketamine in these girls' drinks and happened to place Bill Cosby next to them and happened to place Bill Cosby's room key in their pocket. I don't know. What, what, what does he really think about it? Because strangely, he always brings it up. Uh, it continues here it says Kim was Kim was trying to fly to Wyoming with a doctor to lock me up like on the movie Get Out because I cried about saving my daughter's life it's just again I have no words to say I just don't think he's crazy I think this is the Kanye you're going to receive this is mid, this is like early what over 40s Kanye he's got a family he's got a kid he's made copious amounts he's made you know the amount of wealth he's ascertained in his short period of life I would have a bit of a God complex. I'd be a bit deranged too. And he happens to be married to one of the most, you know, complicated families to figure out in the world, isn't it? In the Kardashians, isn't it? You just don't know what's going on behind those closed doors. Is it all manufactured? Is it all vapid? Is it all surface level? Or is it just a family that happens to like nice things living in LA? We don't know. But, you know, again, where are these friends? Where are those cool people that post pictures sitting or that were all, all up in Wyoming, dressed head to toe in the, in the merch. What are they saying now? Absolutely nothing for the most part. Some are feigning interest in the mental as health aspect of it, but rarely do any of them come out and back his political statements or say he's um, he has the platform for free speech. And they don't say anything. They just sit there and let him deteriorate in public at breakneck speeds. But again, what can you do in it? I think there's so much stuff to worry about now in real life that you have to worry about that it, it i don't know and again maybe that's me i just don't think it banged the same if this would have happened a couple of years ago maybe a five years ago maybe but it just didn't permit you know it didn't hit me as hard as it should probably should have because i've got real life stuff going on and i'm sure you have too i'm sure others have why would you be worried about how kanye is dealing with raising his daughters in this complicated world because it happens to be married their mother happens to be Kim Kardashian that's a problem that they have to sort out we've known that's going to be an issue for ages right we knew that would be something to kind of think about right everyone thinks about that but it's just like he's suddenly realizing it now oh my god like what's gonna happen when did, when she grows up it's like I don't know figure it out that's that's what you're here for that's why you're there as a parent but wow man it's just amazing to see the mind of a guy like that isn't it when you're at that level when you're at that mountain top of the mountain with all the money in the world where you can't you can't get cancelled it's just incredible to see because the cancellation does change the way you operate, the way you maneuver. But when you can't get cancelled, you just end up like Kanye, putting out all your kids' business, to telling all your kids' business as well. Imagine how North's going to feel when she's of age to understand what her dad said. Yeesh. But hey, what can you do? What can you do? Anyway, let's change the English show, episode number 342. Thanks for tuning in. Episode 342. If you're watching via YouTube, make sure you smash that like button down below like button down below smash it smash it smash it if you're watching via if you're listening via the podcast app of course leave me a five star review and share it with your friends and if you want to add me on my socials please do my name is or username is agostino zinger all one word that's agostino zinger a-g-o-s-t-i-n-h-o-z-i-n-g-a but for instagram and twitter be able to find those links in my show note descriptions click descriptions find my socials add me on there download the podcast share it with your friends and i'll see you guys very very soon peace take care bye